Now, a few days back, the new Indiana Jones film, Dial of Destiny, premiered at the famous Cannes Film Festival, no doubt in an effort to hopefully duplicate what happened with Top Gun Maverick last year, where it, a film from a now, shall we say, older franchise, was shown off there first and generated some buzz that eventually led into one of the best and most surprising box office runs of all time. However, reviews out of Cannes for the latest entry in the Indiana Jones franchise haven't exactly been stellar. In fact, some have been rather harsh, and it currently sits at a 52% on Rotten Tomatoes, which hasn't exactly generated the type of early buzz they'd no doubt been hoping for. It's only given fuel to those out there who want to see this film crash and burn for any number of reasons, including, and maybe chief among them, that it may be some sort of last straw that finally sees Kathleen Kennedy removed from the presidency of Lucasfilm. And though we'll have to wait and see just how this film performs at the box office when it's released at the end of June, and make no mistake, poor early reviews or not, this is likely to do quite well at the box office. There are going to be plenty who go and see what should be Harrison Ford's last time as the character. Though, much like with that aforementioned Top Gun Maverick, I think word of mouth, as it tends to do, will ultimately kind of decide its fate, if it can be a smash hit or not, and in turn potentially decide the fate of Kennedy if it fails, relatively speaking. I mean, it's not like Lucasfilm has a ton of other properties to fall back on if this is indeed the end of the Indiana Jones franchise, which I'm guessing it is not meant to be, even though Kennedy has said the character would not be recast, that no one else would ever play Indiana Jones besides Harrison Ford. But it doesn't mean that there isn't hope to pass the uh, hat and whip on to a different character and keep this franchise going indefinitely. I mean, if Indiana Jones is indeed done after what happened with Willow, it would make Star Wars the only thing Lucasfilm has going for it. Because if you hadn't heard, not only did the Willow series fail to get renewed for a second season, but the first season is being pulled from Disney Plus at the end of this week for cost-cutting reasons. Basically, it seems since virtually no one is watching it anymore, not that many watched it when it was first coming out, but Disney is removing it from the platform so that it doesn't have to pay any sort of residuals or royalties to the series creators. Which is sad on so many levels and for so many reasons, though I can't say it's all too surprising that Disney would do this, considering the Willow series was, and this is coming from someone who enjoyed the original movie as a kid when it came out, and who did watch the entirety of this series, well, it just wasn't very good. In fact, I don't know if I've ever seen a show or movie miss its target audience as badly as the new Willow series did. I mean, the film came out in 1988 and didn't exactly set the world on fire when it did. It obviously was no Star Wars or even anything remotely close to it. So it already had an uphill battle against it when it came to generating an audience for the new series. But certainly there are still plenty of people out there, like myself, who were young when it came out and enjoyed it enough to be interested in seeing more from the franchise that could or would or would've appreciated a new story set in what is a rather fun, whimsical, magical world with our titular character of Willow played once again by Warwick Davis. Plenty of people who maybe wanted to share it with their own kids who are now roughly the same age they were when they first saw that film. Literally all they had to do was aim for a fun adventure for the family that honors the original, and it likely would have, I don't know about, been a smash hit, but it had the potential to garner a nice-sized audience, and then a second season, and who knows where from there. And again, it's not like Lucasfilm has a ton of franchises, so turning this into a legitimate one would have been a pretty good thing for them. Instead, it decided to incorporate plenty of what you might call modern lingo and modern issues or storylines that maybe felt a little out of place in the genre or when compared to the original film. It also had plenty of what I like to call teen romance drama, which is fine if you're, I don't know, making a sequel to the Twilight Saga or something and you know that is your audience. I don't begrudge people who enjoy those types of films to each their own. But here, I don't know how many teens or early 20-somethings or whatever demographic this uh, was supposed to appeal to exactly. All I know is it wasn't mine. I don't know how many of them had ever heard of Willow, much less would have enjoyed what this was anyway. Even though it felt like it was pretty much pandering to that crowd instead of, again, just trying to be something fun or that dug a little deeper into the world and the lore. Something that mainly appealed to the older crowd and maybe a younger generation that would watch alongside them. 
But then again, Lucasfilm isn't exactly the best at knowing how to honor the old and pass on to the new or next generation, are they? It's certainly not their speciality. Which brings us inevitably to Star Wars, Lucasfilm's main and soon-to-be sole property of worth if this is indeed the last hurrah for Indiana Jones. And it's a property that isn't exactly doing all that well either, or nowhere as well as it could be, or as well as Disney expected to be when they purchased primarily, let's be honest, Star Wars for around $4 billion 10 years ago. It's had its share of issues that started with the sequel trilogy, where virtually every character from the original trilogy had failed or fallen in some respect, and was used as little more than an attempt to prop up the next generation of characters, despite Kathleen Kennedy's now infamous promise to an outgoing George Lucas to do anything but that. The main thing is to protect these characters, make sure that they still continue to, to live in the way that you created them, and that the universe of Star Wars continues to grow. And though there's few things I'd love to see more than Star Wars managed well and for it to once again become the premier franchise that it used to be, even if that meant under the leadership of Kathleen Kennedy, even if that meant she finally got it, but at this point, I just cannot ever see that happening with Kathleen Kennedy at the helm. Which, no, isn't exactly a new revelation by any stretch. But one of her more recent comments has hammered this home even further, if that's possible, and shown that she just doesn't get Star Wars or really know what she's doing with it or what should be done with it. And what she said all goes along with something I've talked about quite a bit lately, about how I fear the Jedi are about to be changed in these new films to be more appealing to modern audiences, to compete more with superheroes, that it's no coincidence that the Rey film will be forming a new Jedi Order with the books left by the first Jedi Order, who a film is also being made about. Anyway, Kennedy recently said about these upcoming film projects that the question that we're gonna ask with the new Jedi Order and with Rey is does the galaxy need them anymore? Do they want them back? So there's a lot of food for thought in what we're doing, whether it's in the past, present, or future. And first of all here, love them or hate them, but the sequel films, all three of them, actually already sort of address this question and answer it. Heck, you could argue the whole point of the sequels is to affirm the need and importance of the Jedi, not saying it does it well, but that's actually what it does basically do. In the first film, in The Force Awakens, we have Maz Kanata talking about how the fight, the battle of good versus evil, has taken on many forms over the ages and will continue to take on many forms as time goes on, which is a pretty strong argument right out of the gate for the continuation of the Jedi Order that protected the Republic for a thousand generations, or 25,000 years, before it all fell apart thanks to their hubris and dogmatic ways in the end. But just because it didn't end well doesn't mean the previous 25,000 years of success should be thrown out. I've made this comparison before, but if you say you bought a car and it gave you little to no issues for roughly 500,000 miles, which is a pretty long life for a car, and then one day, kind of out of the blue, things started to go wrong with it and it completely broke down, you wouldn't proclaim the car had been a complete and utter failure, you'd probably be on your way to the dealership to buy the exact same car again. But anyway, the second film in the trilogy then, The Last Jedi, well, the whole point of that film was to show or to figure out that the galaxy still needed the Jedi, that Luke was wrong to give up on them and to want them to end. And then in the third film, if it wasn't for Rey and all the previous Jedi, and I mean that literally thanks to what we learn in the New Timelines book, well, if it wasn't for all of them, Palpatine reconquers the galaxy and going back to that message in the first film of the trilogy about the battle between good and evil never ending, even with Palpatine dead, it stands to reason the dark side will rise again, and that you'd kind of want the Jedi around to stop whatever form that takes. And so I can't help but wonder about what is she talking about with the whole does the galaxy need and or want them back questions. Again, not only is that answered by the sequels that she was a part of, but does Kennedy pay attention to the stories they're currently telling and working on? What the Mandoverse is, for better or worse, kind of establishing? Which is that, like, pretty much everyone somehow forgot about or doesn't even know what the Jedi are? Even Mandalorians, some of them, don't seem to know what the Jedi are? That they don't seem to be well known in this time period, despite Luke being a figurehead of the Rebellion that liberated the galaxy from the Empire and even blew up a Death Star in the process? Somehow, like, no one recognizes this guy or has heard of him, or the organization he was a part of. 
So what is Kennedy implying here? That Ray is going to be super popular and well-known across the galaxy despite Luke doing virtually the same thing and being instantly forgotten? Despite uh, the fact that him becoming a legend was apparently part of what broke him? I mean, it already doesn't make a whole lot of sense, but are you really telling me that Luke was quickly forgotten about after what he did after he stopped Palpatine and again blew up a Death Star and did all sorts of amazing things, but Rey will be immortalized and remembered across the galaxy? But then again, I guess coming from Kathleen Kennedy, yeah, that does make sense. Well, that's all I got for you this time. Now it's your turn to take to the comments below and tell me what you think about any and all of this. What do you think about the Indiana Jones reviews thus far? What do you think the end result will be at the box office? Or you can always comment about what Kathleen Kennedy had to say about the upcoming films. Whatever you choose to do, leave a comment below and let's talk some Star Wars or some Lucasfilm. And until next time, thanks for watching.